Our next entrepreneur loves to travel and was living in LA when she decided to follow her dream of starting a fashion business. Maury Luke is now back in the UK and the next stop on her entrepreneurial voyage, the den. This is surreal. It's an amazing part of my journey, but I am obviously nervous, you know what I mean? I think I'm gonna get scorched a little bit, so we shall see what happens. It should be interesting. Moray draws creative inspiration from the ocean. I was born in a seaside town called Pithkal, and nothing beats the sea. I mean, who wouldn't want to be a mermaid? They have incredible hair. But when it comes to the world of commerce, she's on choppy waters. I'm a fashion designer, I'm not a business lady. The Frappuccinos don't pay for themselves, so I definitely need to learn. Shanghai Dragons, oh my goodness, it's absolutely surreal to see you guys. My name is Moray Luke, and I want to present my responsible fashion business. Whew, sorry guys, I'm very, very nervous. You're doing well. <laughs> Breathe. Take a deep breath. Growing up in my sleepy Welsh seaside town, I had two main priorities. One of the biggest priorities was reading Hans Christian Andersen by the Ocean, and the second biggest priority was rushing home from school to see the latest fashion collections and dreaming about how I would, well, put my aesthetic within these. Now, as an adult, the world is so depressing. <laughs> There's a once-in-a-lifetime climate event every two weeks, and what's, you know, what's gonna happen to the world? When I discovered fish leather, I thought it was the most perfect material I had ever seen. There is 618 million pounds Scottish salmon industry, and there's plenty of wastage in that industry. So I thought, well, if I can make that wastage into an air room, then at least I'm doing something in the right direction, you know? So anyway, let's talk about my timelines because my story is kind of crazy. I was in Venice Beach and I met an actress and her mother and they told me, well, I didn't think people started fashion houses when they were 25 years old. I just didn't, I just didn't think that was possible. So I had all these sketches on my iPad and they came across these sketches, you know, and they said, if you don't do this for a living, then we will harass you every day. And they did. But the problem is, I'm kind of a free spirit. I'm not allowed to tell you guys that, but I'm definitely a designer, not a business lady. And realistically, I haven't got that many retailers yet, but I do have big dreams. Mm -hmm. And I need a co-pilot to help me pilot that. Anyway, I would love you guys to check out your products. Thank you so much. Marie, what would be really great is, could you tell us how much money are you looking for today? I, oh, I'm sorry, I missed that and part out. That's the most important part. 30,000 pounds for 20% of my business. A selection of designer handbags made from fish skin are the offering from Moray Luke. Wow, you look good. Why are you walking like that? That's what they do on them catwalks. Who is seeking £30,000 in return for a 20% share in her sustainable accessories business. No, it's not that way. The way when you're on the catwalk, you've got to do this. One foot in front of the other. <laughs> <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> Good grief. A runway rundown from fashion high flyer Tuka Suleiman. But can Moray's fledgling enterprise truly take off? Peter Jones is first to find out. So let's talk about your product. I think it looks very, very good. Thank and in you. fact, the colour. The, the green is, the green is really, for. really different, isn't it? To be honest, over lockdown, I was making a lot of guacamole, and I think that's where my love of green came. Have you launched this? I have just launched it in November. OK. And how many have you made? I've just recently made 30 of them. And where do you make it? These are the prototypes, and they're made in Greenwich. But uh, the new bags that I will be selling are going to be made in uh, Yeovil. What would be the price of one of those bags? 595. And what do they cost to make? They cost, so the old prototypes are 18450 and then the new, uh, the new stock is going to be 140 How many have you sold? Two. Two bags? So, not many, sorry guys, I'm not a millionaire yet. Marie, I have been in this business. I'm, I'm, and I know it quite well. Mm -hmm. and, and I must say, for a UK made bag, okay. good quality. Oh. <laughs> Name me a shop or a store that you think your bags are selling. Fortnum & Mason has always been my dream. Selfridges is another one, but also little, you know, little boutiques and even cruise ships and stuff like that. 
I mean, what you need is Kim Kardashian to carry one of your bags. What, you mean me and Deborah carrying them isn't going to cut it? The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> that miracle moment is what you need for this brand. I could help you and make this work. But I'm going to let my other dragons give you their view and I'll decide. A pause for thought from Tuka Suleiman. Now, Sara Davies wants to build a fuller picture of this self-confessed business novice's finances. So what have you invested in the business to date? I've had a bounce back loan. Yeah, and then I had savings then. Um, and how much in savings? I think something like 10,000 to make my first prototypes. And, and so you're sitting on stock at the moment, you've got 30 bags I have, already yes. made, yeah. ready to go. And that's, do you want to hear the assets of that? Oh, that there's 20,825. 20, so so you've got, you're sitting on 20 grand worth of assets. Yeah. Brilliant. Do you have any of your bounce back law, any of your cash left in the bank? Yeah, I do. Not much, but I do have it, yeah. So can I just um, focus you on your assets? Okay. I think you're taking 30 bags by 600 pounds. 595, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so actually your assets are not that. Oh, okay. Your assets are 30 bags times how much it costs you okay. to make them. You've got to look at a realistic value okay. of the action, because until you've sold it, that doesn't have it's the value, not worth yes. 600 pounds. Okay. But it is worth the 150 pound it costs you to make it. Okay. Okay? Okay, sure. Yeah. The fledgling entrepreneur is given a more realistic appraisal of her business's assets by a pragmatic Deborah Meaden. Stephen Bartlett already counts an accessories business amongst his den deals, so is he gearing up to add another? First of all, I just want to say I think the bags are really beautiful. Oh, I... Yeah, no, they really are. However, I'm just not sure you're at a stage where investment. an investment would be actually like a helpful thing for mm -hmm. you. Because it is a timing issue raising investment as an entrepreneur. I think maybe you're just a little bit too early. OK. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, I take that. You think that's fair enough? That's totally fair enough, yeah. And I'm, then I'm going to say that I'm out. This is beautifully made. Thank you. And you've clearly got a really good eye. And I love the one that you're holding as well. But for this to fly, you do need somebody who's constantly in touch with you, constantly yeah. saying this is what the structure of the business needs to be, this is how you need to manage your money, yeah. and I couldn't honestly offer you that level of input. So I wish you all of the best, Thank and you. I will keep my eye open, but I won't be investing, Maury. I'm out. I think you've been brave to come in and pitch a business that you've just started, you've sold a couple of bags, What's credible about it is that you've been really honest and open from the outset. So I say congratulations, really good. You are on a journey, but too early for an investment, so sadly I'm out. Murray, I love the bag, but I don't know anything about fashion. And I think that's the difficulty for me, is not being a spe If I was a specialist in this industry, you just have an eye. OK. And, you, and maybe that's what you need, is you need an investor from the industry... OK. ..who can really help you set it on fire. So, as much as I love it, I'm going to wish you all the best, but I'm out. Compliments, but no cash, and four dragons are now out. Tuka Suleiman is Moray's final hope of securing the money and mentorship her company craves. Normally, I've seen bags made in the UK mm. and they look like they've been made in, in the back street somewhere, but this is very good quality. Thank you. you know, so I can My artisan works so there. hard. <laughs> no, no, that could commit excellent quality. But to build a bag brand is very difficult. If you look at the big brands, yeah. most brands have been around for at least 50 years, at least. So, you know, to try and enter that market overnight it's not an easy task. I understand. You understand? I, I had to give it a go. No, and I really commend you for, for having the passion to go for it. OK. So I'm not going to invest today and I'm out. But what I am willing to do 
is give you my email address and you can email me and my team and we'll help you where we can. Okay, thank you so much. I really need that. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Tuka. Thank you, that was so Great. sweet. Thank you. Moray leaves the den without a deal, but she does have a direct line to a fashion industry heavyweight. And for this Hans Christian Andersen superfan, that's still a fairy tale ending. The fact that I went from my bedroom to this, you have no idea how much that means to me. It's surreal. It's what it makes all the hard work feel great. Yeah.